strangely enough, this morning I had the opportunity to talk to my, uh, my husband's one colleague, Sandile, uh, Sandile Adonis. He's a labor inspector here in, in George. And when he heard that I'm going to see you, he was, he was very excited. And um, he asked me to ask you a few questions and it's got to do with the tweets. Mm. So one of the things he wanted to know, know was, um, does she accept that she really did something wrong? She apologized um, on national TV, but he'd like to forgive her. But he wants to know, does she really understand? Because she said before, she, it, it's, it, she can't really say she's sorry, she believes in what she said. That's the first question. And then tying in with that, um, how much damage was done by her tweets? Um, especially for the black voters, how many did you lose? Do you feel you'd be able to land on your feet after this? And um, as the Premier, um, she still has a lot of influence on all the bodies and committees that she was um, basically taken out of. Um, why is she still being kept on as Premier? Well, on the first question, I think <coughs> when someone in South African says they apologize, I'm reserved. That is an indicator of the state at which they are put. Helen Zilla's apology yesterday reflected the fact that she understood the damage, she understood the pain and the hurt that it caused. And if you read the apology, I really think this is South African who's genuine about, mm -hmm. about the apology. I found it fitting for me as leader of the DA to accept the apology as one who was offended by the tweets. And I've urged many other South Africans to do likewise, particularly Mr. Adwanis in this instance. On the second question, which is the structure she serves on, Helen Zilla will focus on running the government. Has she broken, has she violated the constitution? That's the question. Has she broken an oath of office? Has she stolen money from South Africans? These are questions that when you make a decision about whether someone should stay on as a premier or not are worth considering. In a world where you can in fact say, in other provinces, and that's not the standard, but in other provinces, people are stealing money, violating their oath of office, and I think there's an error in making the two comparisons. We run a very good government in the Western Cape, and I have to, as leader of the DA, ensure that that government continues to do the work it's designed to do. And so, Helen Zilla will continue in that regard. Um, I to black votes. <coughs> Look, like many South Africans, uh, South Africans from all walks of life took offense to the, to the mm. tweet. I thought the damage uh, was significant to the organization, but I really believe that the DA will be stronger for it because actually the majority of South Africans want to see Africans in South Africa. That's what actually people want. You get extremists on either end and populists on either end. People say, oh, she must go and this and that. And we'll get all of that. Our constituency is to talk to South Africans who are in the middle who say, from time to time we're going to say things to each other that we don't agree on, we'll get them wrong. But if we're willing to accept their wrongness and move on from there, we can build a reconciled South Africa. I think it's an opportunity. I think sometimes, you know, the tough choices of our leadership is asking people to do something that they may not naturally have wanted to do, or naturally want to be comfortable with doing. You've got to ask them to do that. Because at the end of the day, you recognize that what's better over the long run is a reconciled South Africa for black and white, rather than, in fact, an idea that every time we say something, it must be an eye for an eye. Mm -hmm. For in that instance, the nation will remain black.